Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. What are you doing? Inside the Cram Shrine, you encounter an altar decorated with a curious figure. It's Squirticthuli, ancient god of water and doorknobs. Okay. Speaking of water, guess what's sloshing around in the bowl impression on the altar? It's water. Let's dunk our head in there. Uh, place your head in the impression, and the fan on my laptop is going bananas. What's up with that? Uh, you're stuck with a vision of a hospital. In the operating room, a ghostly figure hunches over a giant turtle. It fades, and in its place is the building right next to the shrine. I guess it is pretty obviously a hospital. And then this one? Yep. Last guy. Leafy guy on it. It's Bulba's... Bulba Zanali. God of plants and nature. Has a round impression, and your impression about the impression is you should probably put something round in it. Nearby apartment building. In the once luxurious top floor penthouse, an ancient ghost lounges on the skeletal remains of a nearby couch. A strangely lush potted plant sits next to him where an end table would normally be. Alright, so that's the entire hidden temple. All ready to go. Wow, oh, yeah. Really fill out my quest book? We're fighting a pygmy witch accountant. Most tribal societies invent money fairly quickly because it doesn't take long for someone to come up with a business transaction more complicated than I will give you this cow for those two goats right now. Once someone has the idea of if you give me those two goats right now, I'll give you 12 of these particular kind of seashell and another six of them next week. And then you can give them to my cousin for a cow plus a sack of monkey heads. And that's another witch then another when witch accountancy is born. This particular witch accountant has been short-selling adventure futures and needs to protect his investment by making sure you don't have one. <laughs> uh, I love this game. Uh, he breaks open an abacus, spilling beads all over the floor and tripping the ever-loving crap out of ya. That's a Tiakum. Oh, we got the Mlekuski file. <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Uh, Mlekuski file, page one. First page of a report detailing the finances of a the most boring pygmy to have ever lived. The line items include unscented candles, plain frozen yogurt, unscented salt, unsalted saltines, which what the hell even is that, and sugar-free gum. Wow. Uh, pygmy witch lawyer. Oh, that's that's funny. Pygmy witch profession. That's actually pretty good. This pygmy spiked hair, professional blue war paint, and wicker briefcase mark him as one of the tribe's witch lawyers. Called in to handle cases involving goat theft, breach of pictographic color covered leaf, <laughs> breach of contract, haha, <laughs> or murder. In fact, it's a murder case he's working on right now. Yours. And he's working pro bono. He pummels you in accordance with the guidelines set down by Gnzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgzgz
We have the McCluskey file. Second page of the report contains a line-by-line -line history of his tax filings. Every They're filed on time without any errors or anomalies. Oh, brother. Um, let's go to the Hidden Park. Two sizes, too small. Uh, while wandering around the park, you can kind of pig me which psychiatrist. Hey, Doc, you have a minute? I'd like to talk about my uh, feelings and stuff. Sorry, but I'm late for my next appointment. Call my assistant. We'll schedule something for next week. He runs off, and in the process of running off, drops a tiny bag of powder on the floor. Angry, he wouldn't give uh, take the time to help you. You decide to hork it instead of giving it back to him. Of course, you'll feel guilty about it later. You have to discuss it with a psychiatrist. Oh, man. Shrinking powder. Reduce an enemy's size or hit points by 35 to 50%. Interesting. You're fighting a boraf. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> this is a boraf, half boar, half giraffe creature native to the jungles around the hidden city. Prized by the pygmies as mounts, mostly because they make them feel taller. This one's not domesticated, charging like a wild boraf. It reaches up and gnaws some of the topmost leaves off a nearby tree. Knocks a big, big branch loose, which falls in your solar plexus. So stupid. A uh, pygmy blowgunner, armed with a simple projectile device and an even simpler plan. Run you, run a, uh, shoot you, run a short distance away, wait for you to catch up, repeat. Idea is eventually you'll get solenoid and have an aneurysm and die. <laughs> oh no, I hate having brain aneurysms. He shoots you with his blowgun and runs a short distance away. God, you hate him. We got a pygmy blowgun. Pygmy assault squad. Uh, these have formed a human pig room. Pyramid, better to rain death on you. Except individually, they're pretty sure, and the uh, pyramid only stacks up to your height, so it's more like rain death across at you. Wow. We got a pygmy spear, pygmy pigment, and a bottle of alcohol. Just generic alcohol? Pygmy spear. Oh, plus seven muscle. Uh, one of the spears the pygmies use. It's not long, but it's not the length that's important. Well, that's what the pygmies would say. And of course they would. Uh, another spear. I don't really need more muscle, I feel. Um, and we got pygmy pigment. Uh, plus 25 muscle. A small clay pot of colorful goop the pygmies use as war paint. It'll make you look pretty scary, but be careful. If you overuse it, someone might think you're one of those face painter guys. And it gives us Woad Warrior. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, why not? Cool. Which the Lone Ranger takes his garbister? For an ancient and long abandoned city park, this place sure does have a lot of dumpsters in it. You find yourself standing next to one of them. Let's knock it over. Knock over the dumpster, which falls onto an adjacent dumpster, knocking it over, which falls onto yet another one, and so on and so forth. A chain reaction of a thousand dumpster dominoes. Pygmy janitors flood out of the buildings adjacent to the park and begin scurrying around to pick up the garbage you just jumped everywhere. Another assault squad. Let's actually go back to here. Uh, pygmy headhunter. <laughs> it's a pygmy in a suit and tie, attempting to recruit the best pygmies out of neighboring tribes and into his own. Or failing that, to cut off their heads and impale them on pointy sticks. It's win-win. But we get the jump on him. Let's bonk him. We got a briefcase. Another headhunter. We got another briefcase. All right. I'll look what a briefcase does. Uh, I wonder what's inside. Oh, it has 300 meat. Oh, it has fat stacks of cash. All right. Would that happen to... Does not impress most monsters. These are some fat stacks of cash. Too bad you can't spend cash in loathing. Oh, well, maybe someone else can use it. Okay. Oh, cool. Boss must have walked through here because the pygmies are pretending to pay a lot of attention to their work right now. This leaves them no attention to pay to you. Looks like you got the run of the place. What would you like to do? Knock on the boss's office door, raid the supply cabinet, pick a fight with the cubicle drone, or take a day off. Um, let's fight the boss. No way he's going to let us in there without the McCluskey file. Damn. Well, we got a binder clip, though. Let's see here. Boring binder clip. Binder clips usually are surprisingly fun as office supplies go, but this one, not so much. Let's use it, see what happens. Heard the boss? Only thing this clip should go in is the McCluskey file, and you don't have it yet. Well, I guess that's good that we have that. Now, the witch lawyer. Oh, wait. I dropped it on my nipple. Bonked you with his briefcase. Man, that thing must be full of gold or someone's soul or something. It's heavy. We got an attorney's badge. 
Braun Lapel identifies the wearer as an attorney with all the rights and privileges that come with that profession, such as being allowed to poke around crime scenes, privately interview suspects and witnesses, can steal evidence, and wonder what the heck planet this crazy-ass justice system exists on. Objection. I don't know what objection gives me, but let's put that on right now. Um, let's take off Boris's ring and put on the lawyer's badge. Attorney's, attorney's badge, here it is. I don't know what objection does, but I'm excited to find out. Your opponent moves to attack, but you try to objection and distract him. Nice. Nice. So it's just, it's just an interrupt. That's super radical. Oh, we got the third page of the McCleskey file. Page is a history of McCleskey's regular preventative dental appointments. At one point, the hygienist thought he wasn't flossing enough, but it turned out he totally was. They just gotten them confused with someone else. I think it's probably physically impossible to, uh, we got another briefcase. Cool. I think it's probably, uh, impossible to have a more fat sacks of cash to floss enough. I've literally never heard that I've flossed enough. Oh, we got pygmy legal briefs. Oh, brother. Pop that open. Uh, pair of briefs worn by a pygmy attorney. Not staying with the anything... They're not staying with any of the things you'd expect them to not be staying with, but that is not to say that they are not stained. Oh, boof. Plus six... No, wait. 160 plus 10 plus 30. Versus... 65. Oh, 65 plus a bunch of damage. Ah. Maybe I'll regret that. He strangles you in red tape. No, literally. Oh, we got the fourth page. Uh, this page contains McCluskey's criminal record. That's literally all it says. It just says nothing else. Uh, pick a fight. Oh, Pygmy Witch Accountant. You peek into one of the office cubicles where a bored-looking pygmy is going over some fire ills. Hey, you say, gesturing at the candy jar. Can I have a jelly bean? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, you stick your entire fist and rummage around in the jelly beans, eventually pulling out a black one, which you carefully balance on the F1 key on the pygmy's keyboard. Then you repeat it, jamming your hand there, stirring it around, pulling out a single black jelly bean and placing it on F2. You get to F4 before the pygmy recovers from his dumbfoundedness and asks what the hell you're doing. <laughs> I don't like the black ones, you reply. Well, don't pull them all out and put them on my keyboard. Oh, sorry. You pick one up and put it in your mouth. Then you spit it out into the candy jar. Yeah, no, I really don't like the black ones. He attacks me. Fully within my rights to do so. Uh, his rights, I should say. Uh, our objection bag stops him. This is a photocopy of McCleskey's last will and testament, which consists in its entirety the phrase, just do whatever you normally do when people die. He acts in loco parentitis and gives you a spanking. Ha ha. Oh, man. That might be uh, enough. McCluskey file complete. Almost certainly the dullest document ever committed to paper. Look out, Gatsby. You've got some competition. That's funny. Uh, fuck the great Gatsby. Oh, we got a short calculator. All right. Let's knock on the boss. You're fighting an ancient protector spirit. Step to the boss's office and up to the gigantic mahogany desk. Is that the McCluskey file? Grumbles a gruff voice from the decaying leather chair, which is swiveled away from you. Facing the large cracked picture window that overlooks the... There's a... Ugh, there's a bug in here. Damn it. The voice has an odd echoey quality to it, as though coming from a long way away. Though you can hear it perfectly clearly. Yeah, sure, boss, you say, carefully placing the pages on the... Age brown desk blotter. The chair creaks shrilly as the boss turns to face you. He's not so much a man as the smoky, ghostly outline of one, with a burning yellow glare where his eyes would be. He flips to the document with obvious disdain. Yes, well, I suppose this will do. Um, then seems to notice you for the first time. Who the hell are you? He barks. You don't work here. He grabs a stone seer, which you had assumed to be some kind of fossilized executive stress ball from his desk, chantly loudly chant some words you don't understand ending with a triumphant shout of Pikachu stone sphere begins to crackle with jagged yellow lines of electricity this probably isn't the best time to ask for a raise 
Cool. I interrupted him. Mm, I'm nearly out of everything. Wow, huh? Uh, we hit him for one plus all of those. Okay, that's good. The okay, so yeah, I I I did spoil myself and I read this, but I do I did know that I would need more uh, elemental damages. Spirit uses ghostly claws to rip you a new one. A new what? Well, we'll leave that to your imagination. Cool. Crackling Stone Sphere. Stone Sphere about the size of a large softball or a small cantaloupe. Surface is riddled with tiny cracks, and you're puzzled by the quiet crackling noises it constantly emits. Cool. That's uh, that's one. Uh, and I've kind of been recording contiguously for like 15 minutes, which is pretty great. Means that I'm finding a lot of new things. So we're done with the office building then, huh? So now we have the Hidden Hospital, Bowling Alley, and the Penthouse. Uh, another Pygmy Witch Lawyer. Beats the crap out of you, de jour and de facto. We got more Pygmy briefs, yippee. Oh, okay. We're uh, finding a Pygmy Shaman. <laughs> this apartment must belong to one of the tribe Shaman. Shaman? Shom shop people? Shamans? Told by the smoking braziers full of odd smelling leaves, the walls covered with animal pelts and brightly colored feathers, and the statue in the corner wearing an angry, ugly, leering, angry looking mask. Oh, wait, that isn't a statue or a mask. You get the jump on her. The shaman waves some feathers in your face and makes some offensive ooga booga noises. Oh, boy. Once cursed. You're suffering from the curse of the hidden city. Pretty minor, aches and pains, blurred vision, that kind of thing. That doesn't sound too minor. Uh, we, we hit her a bunch. Let's get some drink. Uh, I think this one. This will cure anything. Nice. What about this one? Yeah. Give me those. Oh, that's for the... Yes, I see. Well, that's okay. Man, these do nothing in the later levels. I may as well not have them. Uh, another pygmy accountant. I like that it comments on how, like, it's making jokes that are possibly offensive, and then it's like, no, yeah, we know. And then we've got short rid of habeas corpus. Let's get away from pygmies without spending an adventure. A legal document so short, it only applies to pygmies. That's funny. Uh, I'm going to take a short break in recording. And uh, just go grind off screen, I guess. So I'll be right back. Hey, and we're back. I found something. You enter the apartment building, and it seems like almost all the residents have popped off of the roof for a smoke break. It's weird. They do that at strangely regular intervals. You make it to the elevator without being attacked by any pygmies. Where would you like to go? Well, you we have to go to the Thrice Cursed Penthouse. But let's see. Uh, we have to get Thrice Cursed, and then... We have to go to the Thrice Cursed Penthouse. Three ways to get cursed. Pygmy Shaman. Go to the Mezzanine. Drink a Cursed Punch. Okay. We're now once cursed. Damn, I should have saved that then. Take the elevator to the Mezzanine. It turns out you're a chump because the Mezzanine is cursed. Uh, okay, now we're twice cursed. Okay, that makes sense. And we're thrice cursed. Nice. Come on, I just need to get the... Oh, right, yeah, the thrice cursed thing. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's go buff up. I've got seven goes of a uh, thrice cursed, so let's uh, let's hope hope that I can make myself tougher. Um, let's get some hand chalk. Black number two, I guess. I don't know if more moxie will do me anything, but I think it affects crit rate or something. Um, hmm. That one will make me lose muscle. Oh, let's put this on. 
Yeah, three damage reduction. That's solid. Let's do two, in fact. Um, Let's regenerate mana. What does this one do? Weapon damage plus 10 and weapon damage plus 10. Cool. Habanero flavored chewing gum. That's fine. The cat's going nuts in the background. Please ignore him. He's just a bastard. Let's get back in. Yep, here we go. Thrice cursed penthouse. Ancient protector spirit. Door to the penthouse suite groans and protests as you push it open. The apartment interior is barely recognizable as having once been luxurious. Crumbling plaster walls are crisscrossed with vines creeping in from the broken windows, and the ancient carpet has been largely replaced with moss and mushrooms. Smoky, shadowy island of a humanoid figure is lounging on the moldering remains of a sofa. You guess it must be the ghost of an ancient high priest, given its head is sort of in the shape of a tribal headdress. Unless those are wings? It's kind of hard to tell from the silhouette. Figure stands, eyes glowering with a baleful green light. Begins to chant in an ancient language you don't understand, finishing with a shout of a Boba Zinelli. An extra lush potted plant nearby explodes in a shower of crocky bits and mulch, and a mossy stone sphere rises into the air with the same bright green glow. Impressive scene, all in all. Fortunately, you aren't so entranced to be surprised when the spirit lunges at you with its ghostly claws. All right. Um. Let's uh let's clubfoot him. All right. Um. Let's furiously wallop him. Nice. Nothing. I guess we can just do normal ones, right? Oh, Slayer has a pound. We got a moss-covered stone sphere. A uh, small softball, large softball or small cantaloupe. Thin layer of moss, indicating it hasn't done much rolling. Ha uh ha, -huh. very funny. Uh, back to the Hidden City. All right. Now we have the Hidden Hospital. Uh, you have to wear some of these. Oh. Cool. Pygmy Witch Nurse. Oh, I should have read that. Fuck. Let's smack her. A bag of pygmy blood. Appetizing. Oh, wait. Recent items. Um. <laughs> bag filled with pygmy blood. Seems remarkably well preserved considering the bag has been stored at jungle temperature. Gives you blood rich. Blood rich. Got a whole bunch of extra blood standing by to take over for any blood you might lose. You hook up the blood bag to the IV you always keep in your veins just in case. Turns out pygmy blood's just the same as regular blood. Uh, pygmy witch surgeon. Your typical witch doctors are generally witch GPs or witch pharmacists. When a pygmy has a very serious element, for example, there's a demon trapped in their skull that needs to be let out, they get referred to a witch surgeon to perform the operation. This one seems pretty sure you have a demon trapped in your skull. Or at least he thinks it's a possibility, and is willing to uh, risk your life to find out. He removes your skull, but at least the stitches are nice and even. Hey, give that back. We got a half-sized scalpel. Okay, so we have to... Wear at least one of those. So let's throw that on. Half size, half size, scalpel. It's an odd, uh, it's a weapon. Makes you look like a doctor, it gives me plus 10 weapon damage. Scalpel is slightly larger than the ones veterinarians use to extract splinters from chihuahuas, but slightly smaller than the ones they use to remove vestigial conjoined twins from chimpanzees. Oh, brother. Okay, let's, um, let's equip that in the main hand. Some pygmy orderlies. You're attacked by three pygmies standing in a row, wearing the exact same shirt. You conclude that they either all work at the same hospital, or they're on a bowling team. When one pulls a scalpel and the other pulls out a bowling pin, you conclude that it's both. <laughs> and you're in danger of being simultaneously cut and bludgeoned. You get the jump on them. You whack them. Nice. Uh, another pygmy witch surgeon. He hits you with a defibrillator. It's a heart-stopping experience. You toss the scalpel from hand to hand, stuffing back and forth in a carefully choreographed pattern, then lunge at him and stab for that many. We got a bloodied surgical dungarees. Nice, nice. Pygmy briefs give me some stuff. What about these? 
Uh, they make me look like a gross doctor. For a pygmy, these would be full-length bloody pants. Yippee. Um, oh boy. The witch doctors do all the fancy important work like communing with spirits and exorcising demons and cutting holes in people's skull, but who does the real work, huh? Who has to clean up all the blood and guts afterwards? The witch nurse. That's who. So this one isn't particularly filled to see some giant clod of an adventurer clomping around the hospital while he's on duty. He gets the jump on you. He pricks your finger to take some blood. For some reason, it hurts worse than having your guts sliced open. What's the deal, fingertips? <laughs> he, he gives you a vaccination against boraph pox, which you weren't at risk of contracting with a big, big needle. Cool. Uh, I'm going to take a little break here. I'll see you guys in the next episode. I'm just going to um, go grind for the next one and then potentially find the last encounter in this area. But yeah, um, I've been Alfred. And as always, this has been Kenny of Loathing. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.